Hello again, this is Preheat. Welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. So today we're going to be talking about Augmentation Evoker and specifically how to improve your UI. So in the past, we've talked about other add-ons like Voodoo in order to set up a speed dial of sorts so that you can choose who you want to buff and basically have it programmed so that all you have to do is click on them and you have visibility on how long your buffs are going to last. But that UI was limited and also Voodoo is just a really not great add-on to use. But, but we have a way better one to talk about today. So we're going to be talking about Cell. And Cell is a really awesome new UI you can use for your raid frames, your party frames, your player frames. Um, they've even got like frames for your target and your focus and stuff like that. But specifically what we're going to discuss today is the spotlight feature in Cell. Now, as you probably know, as Augmentation Evoker, it is super important that you get the buffs on the right people at the right time, because that is how a lot of your damage comes back to you, right? So for a lot of players, having a good UI for this can make a world of a difference. Making sure you have the right targets for Evan Might is really important for maximizing your damage as Augmentation. When it comes to tech corporations monitoring your internet activity or bad actors trying to steal your data, it's kind of the same deal. That's why this video is sponsored by Surfshark. Now I mainly use Surfshark as a VPN, but they have a lot of other tools to help keep you secure online. Stuff like antivirus, private search, DDoS protection, and alerts for all those pesky data leaks that seem to be so common these days. You can also use a VPN for other things that don't have to do with security, like getting around the region lock for certain shows. I've been using Surfshark to browse the anime catalog for Japan for Netflix, and uh, it's pretty great. Surfshark comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so don't hesitate to try it out. Go to surfshark.com slash preheat or click the link in the description below for four extra months as well. Now let's get back to the video. Getting Cell is the same as really any add-on, right? Just go over to whatever your favorite add-on website is. So I'm using Chris Forge here. And then head over to the search bar and type in Cell, just like so. And then make sure that you click to either download this and do this manually or use the add-on to install it. So once you're in game, just make sure that you have cell enabled, go over to your add-ons and make sure that this is checked if it isn't already on. And then you're just going to type slash cell space OPT. And that's going to bring up the cell UI here. So the first step we need to take is to import whatever the base UI that you want to get is. Uh, you can use mine from the GitHub link down below. It'll be also in the video description and also the pinned comment. Or you can pull one from Wago, but you're going to click the about tab. And then here at the bottom, you have the import and export buttons. So we're going to want to click this import button. And that gives us a box where we can paste in a string. So getting a profile for cell is very easy. All you have to do is go to wago.io. So if you mouse over World of Warcraft and then click more imports, it's going to bring you to this page right here where you can have other imports as well. So you're going to click on cell and then you're going to click on augmentation. So Zephyrus actually has a really fantastic profile for augmentation. I'm not using his. But if you want to, this is a great one to use. All you have to do is click on the cell profile right here and then click copy import string. That's going to put the string in your clipboard. Alternatively, you could just go into the video description for this video and then click on the GitHub link that's labeled cell profile. And that will get you the one that I'm working on here today. Anyways, once you've pasted in the string here, you're just going to want to click import in the top right. And then it's going to ask you what sort of settings you want to override. And make sure that if you're changing your current cell setup and you like your current cell setup, that you back it up first, right? That's done with the bottom right button here. Anyways, once we've done that and we've done a slash reload or slash reload UI, what you're going to want to do is open up cell again and then click on the layouts tab. And then you're going to see a button over here for preview. And we're going to click this twice so that we can preview how our raid setup would look like. Also, make sure that you have the spotlight tab enable spotlight frame checked. Very important. That's going to give you the speed dial of sorts, the spotlight frames that we're going to be using to target specifically the people that we want to buff. So make sure that's checked and then take note of the little green boxes here. So you can see it here and you can see it over here on my other raid frame, grabbing and dragging the little green box is how you move this stuff around. And it's going to be really important that we take note of where this little green box is for the spotlight frames, because we're not always going to see this box. It's only going to show up if you put your mouse over it. So just take note of that. Now, once we've set this all up, just like so, all we have to do is click on the little green box and that brings up this menu right here. And as you can see, they all say none. So the way that you program this, uh, there's a couple different ways, but one way is you can click and drag it onto a unit in your raid and it will just show whoever is in that position. So here it would be me. But a better way to do this is actually to hold shift on your keyboard and then click and drag. And this will actually use the unit's name. And this way you can populate all of these different ones here with different people from your raid and have different people to buff. That is going to be how you assign your uh, spotlight frames. And that way you can have it set up so that those are the people that you're buffing. 
And obviously, you know, you can fill in the rest of them, but just make sure that the one you fill out first is the top one. It's directly underneath the little square. That way, if you close it, you'll be able to find it again because finding this little square is kind of hard if you don't have a point of reference. So just take my advice, put your first person up here in the top right. Anyways, going back to the main layout, if you go back over to the other square and you click it here, see it turns red, um, that brings up the UI again. So what we're gonna be doing is importing some indicators. So if you click here on the indicator tab, this is where you can configure this however the way you want it. Once you're on the indicators tab, make sure that you choose the correct layout from the dropdown. So I'm choosing the Augie one here because that's the one I'm using for augmentation. And then you can see all of the different settings and feel free to change any of these. Um, but uh, you know, I've already got some presets kind of for you already. So just to kind of give you an idea of what the, this add-on can do, because it's very powerful. Um, so I have this one set up here with a buff list for prescience and I have it set up enabled here for my own prescience. It's gonna show an icon in the top right whenever I have a prescience on someone. And then if we go down the list, we have other ones as well. So Evan might will show up in the top left here. We'll have a shifting sands one that shows in the middle and it will actually decrement as it goes down on the icon. These are all settings that you can do here. If you don't like that, you can just uncheck show animation. It will get rid of it. Um, and then also if we go down, we have a prescience overlay. So this is actually how I track how long my prescience lasts. I do have an icon. It shows it, but then the color on top is going to be changing that. If you want to change the color, it's going to be right here. You just click the little color box and then you can modify it however you want to change the opacity. And this is specifically for my prescience. So you can see here it says cast by me. Obviously, you could change this if you wanted to. And I also have a tracker for other prescience. This is going to appear as kind of like a little threat bar on the top. And uh, this will just show how long the prescience of other people is on that target. It can be really nice to track other people's prescience because then you know who to buff because as an augmentation evoker, generally you want to buff the same targets. And if you're buffing different targets, maybe you want to coordinate who you're buffing so that you can both benefit from that force multiplication. So if you're missing these options under the indicators or you just want to work with the current cell profile that you have set up, you can add these very easily. All you have to do is click in the bottom left where it says import and then you need to paste in the string that's called cell indicators from the video description. And that will show you over here on the left all of the different indicators. You should have five here if you did it right. And then all you have to do is click import and then make sure that you click yes on this menu. If you're looking to create your own overlay, all you have to do is click the create button. And that's going to give you this little box here where you can give it a name. So we're going to call this one example. And then this little drop down right here is where the magic happens. So this is where you can choose what kind of indicator it's going to be. And obviously there's a lot of choices here, but you've got like icons, bars, overlay, that's the one where it's the entire color over the whole thing. Uh, text, glow, border, texture, etc. And then once you've done that, you can specify if it's a buff or debuff. And once you click yes, you're gonna have the example right here. And then you just need to give it the spell ID for the buff that you're looking to track. So just for reference, Prescience's spell ID is 410089. Evan Mites is 395152. Shifting Sands is 413984. Just giving you those so that you can have them very easily. But if you need to find other ones, you can just look those up on Wowhead. Once you've given it the list of buffs here, you can configure the other settings and make it look exactly the way you want it. And there are a lot of settings in here. I'm not going to cover all of them, but just know that if you're confused about how to set this up, um, you can find help in my Discord in the UI Setup Help channel. It always helps if you provide a screenshot and a clear description of what you're trying to achieve. So anyways, once we have those set up, we're going to head back over to the layouts tab right here. Obviously, it's nice to have the preview on as well. Keep in mind that the settings here are per layout and there is a drop down up here at the top for which layout you're working on. So if you notice that something looks off, you're probably on the default. Just make sure that you choose the correct one here. That way you see the frames that you're looking for. And then over here on the right, we can actually specify when these show up. OK, so as you can see, I'm augmentation. I currently have it set up to layout auto switch. So it's going to automatically change if I'm augmentation. Solo is going to be Augie. And then for Raid, Outdoor, Raid Instance, Raid Mythic, I have these all set to Augie as well. That way, it'll be forcing it into the correct profile whenever I do that content and I'm playing Augmentation versus if I'm playing Devastation. OK, so that is step one complete. So let's go ahead and talk about how we set this up so it's easier for you to buff those targets. So if we click the Click Casting tab at the very top here, click here where it says Use Separate Profile for Each Spec. This way, we only have the Click Casting for Augmentation. OK, the other frames will work normally. Uh, you'll know it's working because it says current profile augmentation. And what you're going to do is right here in the middle, it says left general target. We're going to change general to spell. And then we're going to choose prescience. 
Once you've done that, make sure you click save. That commits it. And then now if I click on myself, notice how I give myself prescience here. This is really nice because now I have a one click prescience, so I don't have to do anything special. If I want to buff a person on my frame with prescience, all I have to do is click on them and it will give them that buff. And then you'll see it here. The timer is going to slowly go down. Okay, so now we have it set up. So we have these awesome user friendly spotlights so we can easily click uh, whoever it is that we want to buff with our prescience. But how do we know if their cooldowns are up or not? Well, that ties into the next part of this. So the next step of this is we need to make sure we have an add-on called Omni CD in installed here. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for Omni CD. Not to be confused with Omni CC, that is a different add-on. We're going to click Omni CD as in Delta, Party Cooldown Tracker, and make sure that we have this installed. After that, it's the same thing as before. Just make sure that you have it enabled here, and then we're going to type out slash Omni CD, and that will bring up this menu here. Make sure first, whenever you go into Omni CD, that you choose Outdoor Zones, Enable, and then that you copy it from the RAID. That way we can see how the RAID frames are going to look. Uh, whenever we're outdoors, because we're not in a raid. Normally, it would only show up in a raid unless we have this checked. After that, we're going to go over to raids, make sure this is enabled, and then we're going to make sure that we see the buffs that we're tracking. And then we're going to need to make sure that we're tracking the right buffs. So go ahead and click spells over here. And this is where we have all of the spells listed for every class. You can go ahead and select them and choose whichever ones are useful for you to see. And I'm actually going to click Edmund Might here for a test. But checking this isn't enough. We also need to make sure that we click Test. That way it shows up. After that, we can configure this however we would like. So what we're going to do is click the Position tab. And then for add-ons, it's probably going to be set to Auto. But what we actually want to set this to is Cell Spotlight. Very important. So we set this add-ons to Cell Spotlight. That will anchor it to the Spotlight frame instead of your RAID frames, which will look a lot better. And then you can make it uh, however you want it to be set up, right? So in my case, I have it positioned to the right. Obviously, if you want to move it to left here, you can do that. You can also do other ones if you want to anchor it differently. Um, and then the size of the icon is also important. So I actually want the size of the icon to match the frame itself. So what I'm going to do is drag that size down until it looks just right. And uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And then we're going to click highlighting. Make sure you enable highlighting. And then under highlight icons, make sure you click the enable right here. And then you can choose the type. I actually like the strong yellow glow. This is going to show a highlight whenever you have it actually up. And then what we're going to do is turn off these other ones that we don't care about. And we're going to just turn on offensive. But yeah, what's really great about setting up this way is uh, whenever they're actually in their cooldowns, you're going to see it glow yellow. And then whenever they're outside their cooldowns, it's just going to be like a, uh, a cooldown tracker. Remember, if you aren't seeing the spell you want to see, just go ahead and click over here on spells. Make sure you have it selected and then choose the person that you want to see there. So when it comes to which cooldowns you actually want to track, you want to kind of be uh, a little bit minimalistic with it, in my opinion. It's probably best to only track the things that you really care about seeing, like whenever they're going to be doing a ton of damage. So stuff like Army of the Dead is a pretty good one, Empowered Rune Weapon, and then also uh, Unholy Assault are probably good ones for Death Knight. For Demon Hunter, we're probably going to want to track their Metamorphosis. For Druid, we're going to want to track their Celestial Alignment and then all of the Incarns. Make sure we have those turned on. Uh, also Berserker as well. And if I see multiple, I'll just check all of them. For Evoker, we're going to want Dragon Rage. And I'm going to leave Ebonmite on just so I can keep seeing my own little icon. But, but you probably don't want to ever buff an Augmentation Evoker. So you probably want to turn this one off before you're done. For Hunter, uh, you can track Bestial Wrath if you like. But I find that that's like always up. So it doesn't really give me much information. So instead, what I do is track Bloodshed, Call the Wild, and Coordinate Assault. I find those are the best ones to look at. For Mage, you're going to want to track Combustion, Icy Veins, and Arcane Surge. You may also want to track Touch of the Magi as well. For Monk, you're going to want to track Invoke Swin and then also Storm Earth and Fire. For Paladin, you probably want to track their uh, Final Reckoning, Wake of Ashes, Execution Sense. These two are mutually exclusive, so they can't have both at the same time. Uh, you can also do like Crusader and Avenging Wrath just in case they're specced into those instead of having it auto fire with the uh, Wake of Ashes. For Priest, I track Power Infusion and Void Eruption. For Rogue, I just track Death's Mark. King's Bane, Shadow Blades. Uh, I think you can also probably do Adrenaline Rush, but uh, that's up to you. For Shaman, just make sure that you're tracking their Ascendance. The Feral Spirits are almost always up, so that one, I'm not really sure if that's a good one to track. Uh, you can also do the Fire Elemental as well. For Warlock, I'm honestly not really sure what to track, but I just track their demons, so like Call the Fell Lord, and then also the Dark Lair, Demonic Tyrant, Infernal Vile Fiend. You can also turn on Dimensional Rift as well. And for Warrior, I just track Avatar, Champion Spear, Recklessness. Um, and obviously, if you want to change these, right, you don't have to go with whatever I'm giving you. This is just an example. One last note, if you notice that the number isn't displaying for how long they have on their cooldown, just make sure that you go over the icons and then under miscellaneous, turn on show numbers for cooldowns. 
That way you can actually see that. So if we have it set properly, if I use my Ebonmite, you should see it glow just like so. See that? Now this glow will persist while the buff is active and then you'll see right as it ends, it does have a timer left on it. That way I can see how long they have until their buff. Once you're happy with how it looks, go ahead and disable Ebonmite and then turn off test mode. And with that done, uh, people's cooldowns will just show up over here on the right, which is really nice because that way you can see how long they have left on cooldown. All right, so to show it in action, all you have to do is click the little square to uh, turn this thing on and then you can right click to remove people. If you wanna add people, hold down shift and click and drag it. It's the best way to do that. And you can populate them in and then you'll see the Omni CD cooldown showing up on the right as I add people. Once you're done, click the little square again and that will close this menu. And just keep in mind, you can only do this outside of combat. So uh, yeah, you can drag it around in combat, but you cannot uh, change who your presets are while you're in combat. You have to wait until the pull is over. Uh, but yeah, you have this really awesome new UI. It's super customizable. You can find other, you know, versions on Wego if you want to download other people's profiles. But uh, that's really going to be it for today. So hopefully you enjoy this UI as much as I have. And as always, thank you all for watching and we'll see you in the next one.